In this video, we're going to talk about how to name assets. So here are some rules that you need to know. The first thing you want to do is you want to identify the ion. It could be a polyatomic ion or a monoatomic ion. So hopefully you memorize those ions. If not, I recommend that you go to Google Images and just type in polyatomic ion sheet or something like that. The second thing you want to do is you want to use the rules. And here it is listed below. So let's say if you have an ion with the suffix IDE, you're going to replace that with the prefix hydro plus the suffix ic and then the word acid. Now, if the polyatomic ion ends in the suffix eight, you're not going to use the prefix hydro. All you're going to write is ic plus acid. If the polyatomic ion ends with eight, I mean not eight, but it, then you're going to replace that with is, and then you're going to add the word acid. So here's a list of ions that we're going to use in this video. So let's start with this example, HClO3. How can we name this acid? So step one is to identify the ion. So HClO3 contains the ion ClO3 minus which is known as chlorate. Now what we're going to do is, because it has the suffix eight, we're going to replace it with ic and add the word acid. So HClO3 is called chloric, which I'm going to put in a different uh, color, chloric acid. And so that's a simple way in which you can name acids. So you need to know the ions. Now let's try some other examples. Try these two. Write the name of the acid HClO2 and also HCl. Feel free to pause the video if you want to. So step one is to identify the ion. If we remove the hydrogen atom, we're left with the ion chloride. Now what should we do if we have the suffix ITE? What should we do? What should we replace it with? We need to replace it with is. So instead of having chlorite, it's going to become chloris. And then we're going to write the word acid. So that's the name, chloris acid. Now what about HCl? If we remove the hydrogen atom, HCl becomes Cl minus. And the name for that is chloride. So what do we need to do if the ion ends with the suffix ide, I-D-E? What should we do? If it ends with I-D-E, you need to add the prefix hydro, the suffix ic or I-C, and then the word acid. So this is going to be called hydro. Let me use a different color. So it's hydro, and then instead of saying chloride, it's going to be chloric acid. So that's how you write the name for HCl. It's hydrochloric acid. Now, let's move on to our next examples. Try these two, HNO3 and HNO2. So what are the names of these two acids? Step one, identify the ion. What polyatomic ion does this acid contain? So looking above, we see that this is nitrate. So it has the nitrate polyatomic ion and nitrate has the suffix A-T-E. So anytime you see eight, we're going to replace it with ic. So this is going to become nitric acid. And so that's HNO3, nitric acid. Now HNO2 has the polyatomic ion nitrite. And so when you see the suffix ite, what should you do? When you see ite, 
you need to replace it with is. So this is nitrous acid. Now there are some exceptions that you need to be aware of. And we're going to talk about them in the next example. But if you want to, go ahead and name these three acids. H2SO4, H2SO3, and H2S. So H2SO4, if we remove the two hydrogen atoms, this will give us the polyatomic ion SO4 2 minus, which we could see is called sulfate. So how do we name this particular acid? We know that we need to replace ATE with ic plus the word acid. So if we follow those rules the way it is, this indicates that we should have sulfic acid. But is that the correct name? This acid is not called sulfic acid. Instead, it's called the element sulfur and then the suffix ic. So it's sulfuric acid. And so there are some exceptions that you need to watch out for. This is one of them. Now, based on what you have just seen, what do you think the names of the remaining two acids will be? So let's start with the ion. If we take away the two hydrogen atoms, we get the ion sulfite, as you can see here. And we know that we have to replace ite with is. So should it be sulfis acid or something else? So like the first example, we're going to write the name of the element first, sulfur, and then we're going to add the suffix is. So this is called sulfurous acid. Now H2S, if we take off the two hydrogen atoms, we're going to get the ion sulfide. Well, technically, we're taking off two hydrogen ions. So for those of you who, you know, are like keen to that stuff. Now S2 minus is called sulfide. So what do we need to do here? And I'm running out of space. We need to take off the suffix IDE and we're going to add hydro plus IC plus acid. So let me get rid of this. So this is going to be called hydro and then we're going to write the element sulfur, and then the suffix ic, acid. So if you see IDE, make sure to add the prefix hydro plus the suffix ic and the word acid. So that's how you write the name for H2S. Now before we move on to the next topic, I want to mention that I'm going to post some resources in the description section of this video. So when you get a chance, feel free to take a look at that. And this is for those of you who want more examples, like on how to name molecular compounds, how to name ionic compounds, even writing the formulas of such. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like this video. Now let's focus on writing the formulas of acids. So let's say if you're given the name of the acid, Let's go with carbonic acid. How can we take this information and convert it into a chemical formula? So what do you think we need to do? So focus on the suffix ic. If we replace that with eight, this gives us the polyatomic ion carbonate. Now, using the ion chart that we have above, we need to look for the formula for carbonate. So carbonate has the formula CO3, 2 minus. Now, we need to add some hydrogen ions to this polyatomic ion. The question is how many? Should we add one hydrogen ion, two, three, four? The answer is in the charge. We need to neutralize that negative two charge. So therefore, we need to add two hydrogen ions. Now, when writing the formula, we need to write the hydrogen atoms first. 
and so it's going to be H2CO3. And so this is the chemical formula of carbonic acid. Now for the sake of practice, let's try another example. Let's try phosphorus acid. So go ahead and write the chemical formula of phosphorus acid. So notice the suffix is. So we're going to replace that with it. So this gives us the polyatomic ion phosphite. So let's write the formula for that. So phosphite is PO3 3 minus. Now how many hydrogen ions should we add to this polyatomic ion? So we have a minus 3 charge. Therefore we're going to add 3 hydrogen ions. Which means that the chemical formula is H3PO3. And so that's the formula for phosphorus acid. Now let's do one more example. Hydrobromic acid. So what ion corresponds to this particular acid? Because there's different types of ions. You have the perbromate ion. There's the bromate ion. Notice that it follows perchlorate, chlorate, and so forth. This is bromite. This is hypobromite. And this is bromide. Which of these five ions do we need to use? What would you say? So notice that we have the prefix hydro and the suffix ic. And whenever you have hydro and ic, you need to replace it with ide. This is bromate. I mean, that's perbromate. It doesn't have ide in it. This is bromate. That's bromite, hypobromite. This is bromide. It has the ide suffix. So therefore, hydrobromic acid contains the monoatomic ion bromide, which I'm going to write it like this. So anytime you see hydro and IC, you need to replace it with the ion that has the end in ide. So bromide, as we said before, is Br minus. So how many hydrogen ions are we going to add this time? Bromide has a negative one charge. So to neutralize that charge, we only need to add one hydrogen ion. Negative one plus positive one adds up to zero. So therefore, the chemical formula for hydrobromic acid is HBr. And so now you know how to write the chemical formula of acids, and you also know how to name an acid. And so that's basically it for this video. So for those of you who like this video, or if you want to show your appreciation, feel free to subscribe to this channel, and uh, don't forget to click on that notification bell. Thanks again for watching. And by the way, don't forget to check out the resources in the description section below.